uh, like you, like all of you guys, we, we talked about this, I believe, in uh, in, uh, in BC last year. Um, Philippe took over his, his father, and I believe Philippe is the uh, seventh generation. Yeah, more or less. We, we don't know exactly. Seven or eight, probably. And uh, Philippe and I have uh, started um, working in, in Quebec together pretty much the first year, I believe, right, Christopher, with uh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Ian Hampson around 2014, at the end of 14 or, or beginning of 2015. That's right. And, um, and the growth here is, uh, I would say, unstoppable. I, I, I actually run out of stock right now uh, of uh, Philippe's wines. Uh, they they catch the attention of both the new um, people who, who, who for which Burgundy is new for them who don't know that much about Burgundy, but it also catches the attention of, of real connoisseurs and real um, Burgundy aficionados, and that's what I like about uh, as wines. Is that they, they really uh, the, the the event tale of clientele for for those wines are uh, really uh, really good. So, Philippe, I'll, I'll let you do the uh, the uh, the blah blah work about the uh, the estate uh, yourself. If at any point you need me to you know to uh, translate something or to uh, do anything about uh, products, uh, terroir, uh, geology, or translation terms, uh, don't hesitate. I'm there all, all uh, during uh, the whole Zoom. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, it, it, thank you for having me by Zoom. It's the first time for me. Uh, I will try to to be uh, good in this uh, uh, speaking well in English. Sorry for that because I'm normally in the vineyard and um, the the grapes doesn't speak any English. <laughs> 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 Uh, so I will introduce my my state. So um, I took my father business in 2006. Now uh, we still have a family estate, uh, which is around 18 hectares of vineyard. Uh, we are 10 people working on the on the on the vineyard. Uh, we are specialized in uh, in white wine in Merceau. Uh, 80 percent of the of the wines uh, come from Chardonnay, white. And uh, 20 other percent come from the Pinot Noir the, the, um, on the right. Uh, and I don't know if you know something about Burgundy. If you want, I speak about Burgundy before or uh, direct to the to the estate. I th you, know, I think you can you can uh, you can throw a little like big picture of uh, of Burgundy in general. Uh, uh, maybe. Quick, really quickly about the system of appellation. I don't know everyone if if you are uh, if you are interested into that, and if if this is going to be uh, if it's if this is going to work something for you. Uh, okay, Burgundy, Burgundy seems very complicated because we've got a lot of appellation and different wine, but it's actually very simple uh, because we only have um, one uh, variety of white, which is Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. All the difference uh, of the quality of the wine, of the, um, of the kind of the wine, come from the terroir, which means uh, the, where the vineyard grows. Uh, we can explain it by the geological movement uh, very uh, long time ago. Uh, but uh, actually, if we make on the same system to make the, gra the grow the grapes and make the wine, for two vineyards, which is 200 meters from each other, we make different wine because the soil is different, the exposition is different, the, 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 the sun is different. So actually our work is um, look after the vineyard, look after the terroir, and uh, after make the wine, which means um, it's all the same making from the, from the pruning to the bottling, and our target is to express the terroir. And we've got several different parcels. Um, for myself, it's 26 different appellations. Uh, so 26 different wines, uh, different style of wine. Uh, they all come from the same variety, the same making. And just the, the, the 
difference come from the terroir. Uh, Burgundy uh, is pretty small because it's around 3% of the total vineyard uh, in France, which is very small. And uh, if we speak about uh, Côte de Beaune, because we have uh, five different areas in Burgundy, Chablis, Côte de Nuit, Côte de Beaune, uh, Côte Chalonnais, and Maconnais. For myself, I'm in Côte de Beaune, so right in, 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 uh, in the center. Uh, the Côte de Beaune is, um, is a small band of, of vineyard, which is one kilometer large and uh, about 25, 30 kilometers long from the north to the south uh, around Beaune. Uh, in Côte de Beaune, we've got different village, uh, which uh, uh, give the name of the, 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 the wine. Uh, like uh, Pomar, Volnay, uh, Red, and uh, Merceau, Pligny, and Chassin. Uh, all the town uh, uh, got an uh, appellation, and uh, the name of the town will give the name of the appellation. I'm, I'm clear, or do you have any question? Is it okay for you? Great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Philippe, you, you mean the village appellation? Yes, um, in each town, like in Merceau, we've got three steps of appellation, start to be complicated. Uh, the hunter level is Bourgogne, so we've got Bourgogne in, uh, in, in, in Merceau, uh, is um, the, the hunter level of the quality. Est-ce que, est que tu, tu as la carte de la Bourgogne avec toi, Philippe? Oui. Uh, Est-ce qu'on peut... Uh, Dans, dans, le, dans cette présentation PowerPoint, est-ce que tu as la carte? Oui, mais je n'ai pas la main dessus. OK, non, mais je, je croyais qu'on était sur la présentation PowerPoint là maintenant. Oui, mais, mais c'est uh, Selwyn qui doit... doit, doit Selwyn, do, do you have, uh, do you have the, the, uh, the map? The, the, the map for Burgundy in general, so we can like... Is it in this presentation? Not pinpoint every village, but understand the, the classification. It. Yeah, it's in the presentation. Oh, uh, I, I will try to actually. Ah, uh, so it's probably number four or five. Can you guys see that? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's good. Uh, so we've got uh, Burgundy is, is here. You see the, the mouth? Oh, no. Uh, you see, it's, it's very small. So you've got Bonn uh, and Merceau. Uh, ah. I, I just gave you control so you can change yeah. it. Tu peux, tu peux jouer avec la souris, uh, Philippe, maintenant. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I saw so uh, sorry, it's, it's very new for me. It's no going too fast. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I cannot come back. We try. You want to go back to the map? Yeah, yeah to the map. Yes. Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah. So this is all the Burgundy on your left. Um, this is different different uh, area. Chablis on the north, uh, Côte de Nuit, Côte de Beaune, Côte Chalonnaise, and most of the south, uh, Maconnais. So Beaune is right in the middle, and you see the all the different town. If you go to the to, to the map on the right. Uh, you've got all the little town uh, which give the name to the appellation. So you've got from Bonn, uh, you go to Pomar, Volnay, uh, Merceau, Côte du Rest, Puligny, Morachet, Chassagne Morachet, Santenay, and uh, Les Maranges. This is uh, all the Côte de Bonne. Uh, so each, each, each state of Burgundy has got a uh, different little parcel of uh, different village and make different kind of wine. Uh, for myself, 
uh, we've got vineyard uh, in Beaune, uh, we've got vineyard in Puligny, Chassagne, Ossé du uh, and a very small one in Corton, which is Grand Cru. And the most of the, the, the domain is in Meursault, uh, with different, uh, different uh, Marcel, uh, Meursault village and Premier Cru. So if we back to the, um, to the wine making now, uh, we are very focused on the, on the terroir, on the soil, because it's, it's where the, we make the wine, actually. <coughs> um, we are very, um, we want to be careful about the, what we make in the vineyard to, to express the terroir, because it's what's in, important. And uh, at least um, a Chassagne, a Meursault will be different in the different style of wine. Chassagne is more masculine, more um, powerful, and Meursault is more creamy, for example. Uh, voilà. Je passe un peu. Uh, so that's fine. Thank you. So this is a picture with my father. Um, because um, it's family state, so my father is retired now. Uh, I took the, the business in 2006. Uh, he started to make wine in '58. Uh, my grandfather was uh, one brewer before. Uh, like Francois said, uh, we are probably seven or eight generations of winemaker and, and one brewer in Nassau. So my father started the, the estate in '58 with uh, some of the parcel, and a little bit he, he increased the estate. He bought some other parcel, and um, in '95 he bought a place in Meursault called the Chateau de Cito, uh, uh, right in the center, and uh, he replanted the vineyard. There was no vineyard on the, on the chateau, and he replanted the vineyard. This parcel is very important for us. Uh, it's, it's a part of the history for the family because um, he replant a part of the history of Burgundy as well, because it was um, where the monks of Cito makes wine in uh, 1098. Uh, for 11 centuries, they start to make wine until the Philoxera. They, they make wine there you know, until the Philoxera. And for the Philoxera crisis, when all the vineyards have been destroyed by the, by the, uh, by the disease, um, the vineyard are not be replanted after that. So when my father bought the place, he uh, replanted the vineyard, and now we are very proud of it because it's a monopoly, uh, which means uh, we are the only one to produce this parcel. And uh, I, I used to say it's my garden. It's like a it's like little baby, and we 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 are very proud to. We live in, a, in, a, in the center of the, of the town, and uh, we are very proud of this process. Philippe, when I back to the... Philippe, je, oui. euh, tu peux euh, expliquer la différence entre un meurceau, juste meurceau village, et quand il y a premier cru, ou quand il y a une mention de parcelle comme un monopole comme le tien? Parce que qualitativement, il y a une différence. Oui. Euh... Like uh, François, I want uh, to explain. Uh, in, we, we, uh, in this bottle, for example, we've got Merceau, which is the appellation. And we write the name of the parcel, which is a Lyodi. It is very important because each Lyodi has got a character. Each Lyodi is different. Each Lyodi is, um, is uh, another type of wine, again. And uh, it's very important because um, This Lyodi, for example, the Vieux Clos, comes from a particular parcel. Uh, so it will make different qualities than Meursault Les Grands Charons or Meursault Premier Cru. Uh, Meursault Premier Cru is like the best, um, best place where we go the vineyard, the, the wet, sorry. Uh, it's a part of the town where we, we think that it's the best place. So we've got Perrière, Jean Brière, Charme, for example, different parcels. Um, this classification, this UD, uh, I cannot move it. Uh, is in um, 36, in 1936, the Appellation d'Origine uh, uh, made a map and uh, they fix it and we cannot move it. So 
I cannot, for example, I cannot make a Merso premier cru from uh, Bioclo because it's got the appellation and I cannot uh, be. Uh, um, it's very important because <coughs> uh, it makes a difference uh, for us. It makes its own character of the wine. And actually, it makes the things very complicated for us because um, we make, when we pick the grapes, uh, we only make the, the wine from one parcel, so a single parcel. We keep it separately. If we make a mistake, we lose the quality of the wine. So we have to be very careful of what we do on the, on the on wine because we cannot uh, do a blending of the of the parcel or of the grape. So each each vineyard is keep it uh, is keep uh, separately, and we make a, a, a different wine. Pas si je suis clair, c'est bon pour toi. Oui. So, 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 can we say that a Merceau Grand Charon or a Merceau uh, Vieux Clos du Château de Cito is uh, a little bit higher in quality than just Merceau and a little bit lower in quality than Merceau Premier Cru? Uh, exactly. Uh, okay. Exactly. When we, um, when we wipe the VOD, it means we are proud to be, to be, to be sure the VOD. It's um, to show that it's better quality. And um, it's still Merceau, so the best quality is the premier cru with the name of the lieu. Okay, you can't, you can't just put random words in there like your grandfather's name on the, on the, on the, uh, no. uh, on the plot. <laughs> it has no, no. to be something geographically recognized by the government, right? All the lieu is white on the map and we cannot move it. Sometimes okay. the name is, is, is pretty bad because it's old French and uh, we cannot understand it or it's very hard to explain. Uh, the, the name is, uh, it can be, uh, can be stupid, but it's, it's a law, so we have to write it. It's, it's like this. Uh, for the Vieux Clos, we are lucky. It's a good name. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a monopoly and it's a, it's a good name. Um, um, do you have any question? Have the um, my clear or okay? Hi, Philippe. It's Darcy from Calgary. I uh, was just wondering about uh, the the Vieux Clos. Is it all planted to Chardonnay only? Yes, 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 yes. Um, it's a part of the town. Again, the, the terroir in Merceau is very specific of Chardonnay. We plant Chardonnay not because we want to plant it, but it, we plant Chardonnay because the soil is better for the Chardonnay. Um, if we back to the um, to the map, you'll see uh, there's three towns very uh, important for the Chardonnay, which is Merceau, Puligny, and Chassagne. It's a, it's a part of the soil where uh, the Chardonnay growing very well. Um, and after Merceau on the north, you've got Volnay, uh, Volnay, Pomar, and Beaune, which is much better for the for the weight. Uh, if we plant Chardonnay and Pomar, we will not make a good wine, I think. And uh, even in uh, some part of Merceau, uh, we, we, the soil is not very good for the, for the Chardonnay, for the Pinot, sorry. Um, the, the border is not very clear between Bonnet and Merceau, uh, because we've got uh, a, a small part uh, very close to Bonnet where we make a good, a good Pinot. The soil is okay, but if we go to the south of the town, uh, close to Puligny, it's only Chardonnay. It's only Chardonnay. Um, I have a follow-up question now that you uh, said that uh, is, what are the identifying elements in the soil that that lean uh, that region so it's not good for, or not the best for Pinot Noir? And, uh, the, why, why we decided, you, you mean? Just uh, what what in the soil makes that difference to you? Ah, um, it's a complicated question because the soil is, is very different. We we don't know exactly. I'm I'm not um, uh, efficient enough to to say that. But uh, we make the wine in Merceau since uh, 11th century. So a lot of people try different things, and after several several years to try to plant uh, other things. They decide and they, they, um, they test the quality 
and the the same is a uh, is better place for the journey or better place for the team. Actually, the soil is is very complicated because it's a mix of a lot of things, and uh, we we can try to understand that it's more clay or more stony soil, or there's some very strong stone on the on the on the back of the soil. Uh, we make uh, minerality of the chardonnay. Uh, that's important. But it's a um, it's a combination of a lot of uh, little things like uh, uh, the raining, the the sun, the, the very 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 lot of different things. And I think it's a it's a part of the secret. And uh, is a uh, is for me very important because as soon as we understand that very clearly, the Chinese will copy it. So I, I don't want it. I understand. I understand. Thanks very much. Philippe, uh, les seuls, il y a Sherry qui demande um, uh, argilo calcaire et marne. Oui, on a des marnes, des, um, with, uh, comment on dit marne en... Lim limestone and marls. Limestone mines, oui, on, on the top of the hill is, is a limestone mine, uh, it's more clay on the back, and uh, in the middle of the, the hill, we've got very, very strong stones, and uh, very, uh, very hard. Uh, we've got, for example, um, uh, a rock. Uh, uh, we've got a lieu called Le Narvo, uh, which is right on the stone and give very, very mineral character of the, of the wine. Because the, the roots of the vineyard go through the stones uh, and, and, and will uh, extract the minerality of the soil. So we'll um, so we'll back to the to the wine making. Uh, uh, yes, if we go back to the to the to the wine making, uh, is is very very simple on a way for me. Uh, I will explain uh, quickly for the for the wine making. Um, for the white, we pick uh, mainly by hand uh, and we press very quick. I mean, uh, if, for example, pick on a Monday, and uh, Monday afternoon is pressed. As soon as we pick, the, we have to press. And the next day, the juice is in barrel, straight to barrel. Uh, and fermenting. Uh, and, oh, sorry. Ah, oh, yes, sorry. sorry. Uh, I will go back, probably it's better to finish the history. All right. Um, uh, I'm come back to the to the to the chateau. Uh, I was explaining the, the vieux clos and uh, my father what my father did with the vieux clos. Um, at least uh, we sold the chateau because we had the chateau de Cito. Uh, we sold it in 2010. Uh, we keep the vineyard, we keep the, um, the area, but we only sold the, the chateau, uh, the big building, uh, because it was too complicated for me to reform a big building like this and to make the wine. So we choose to, I chose to make the wine. Uh, yes, for me, it was uh, more interesting. And so now the chateau is an hotel, a restaurant. Uh, we sold it to uh, an April, uh, local guy, local private guy, and he makes a hotel restaurant. And last year, uh, uh, another part of the history, my brother, Charles, because I was, I was alone to manage the, the vineyard and the, the winemaking since, uh, since 2006, and my brother came back with me. Uh, he was doing another job in Lyon since uh, 20 years, and uh, he decided to come back to the, to the winemaking and to, to the wine uh, to the to the business. 
Uh, I'm very happy about it because we've got uh, enough work and uh, it's a good opportunity for me to have uh, someone to help me. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, when we make the wine in, uh, is um, I'm alone to decide everything and uh, now uh, I'm with my brother, uh, part of the family and I'm very happy with it. So it's a, a new challenge for us. Uh, in same time, we decide to move uh, something on the estate, uh, so we change the name. We are back to the Philippe Boudreau. Before we were in uh, Chateau Cito, and now it's Philippe Boudreau because we want to be more. Um, uh, uh, we want to to give my father's name. Uh, I'm Philippe, but my father is Philippe, and we want to to give the, the estate to my father. Uh, in the same time, we start the organic. Uh, we will be certified in two years now. Uh, we are organic on the, on the field since uh, 2015. And last year, we start to be uh, certified by EcoCert. So next step, uh, we will be organic. It will be not change the quality of the wine and not change something on the vineyard because we, I, I would like to be uh, set up on a vineyard before start to be uh, certified. So everything is set up and we will carry on. Philip, will you will you be putting the uh, organic uh, label uh, or tag on the label? Yes, but we are allowed to do it uh, from 2021 vintage. Okay. Okay. Um, it was it was quite important for me to to do this because uh, we live in vineyard, we work on vineyard, and um, I'm focused on my uh, health and uh, the, my children's uh, life, and uh, I want to to to, to make something more um, with less chemical and uh, healthy things. <clears throat> So uh, that's the part of the history uh, of the vineyard. Uh, that's an example of the what we make in the vineyard for growing. So we don't use any chemical. Uh, we have to plug the, the, the soil and to work on the on the soil to, to take off the the the, the weeds and uh, the and everything. Uh, so now uh, I will go to the to the winemaking. Sorry, I'm a bit confused on that. But, um, the winemaking. So the first thing for the white uh, is uh, the most important is the picking date. Uh, Chardonnay can be overripe uh, very quick or not enough swipe. Uh, like so, our target is to test the berries and to pick when it's. Uh, ripe enough and not too ripe uh, because we want a, a good balance because between sugar content and acidity. Uh, acidity is a good challenge because we want to to keep the the freshness, the balance of the wine, and for that we have to keep the acidity. Uh, we cannot add uh, chemical acidity, so I don't want to add uh, tartaric acid. So I want to keep the natural acid. So the most important for me is the picking day. After that, uh, the, the grapes are uh, bring to the winery, uh, pressed very quick, like I said before, uh, and straight to barrel uh, next day. Um, we, we don't work so much on the wine because uh, I don't want to. Uh, I want to keep the... the, the, the the terroir uh, expression. So I don't want to work on the wine making uh, so much. So I don't add any yeast. I don't add any chemical product. Uh, I leave the wine alone in the in the cellar. I just check the the, the fermentation, the alcoholic fermentation, as going, and uh, and that's it. So um, the juice is in barrels, and uh, for example, they are still in the same place uh, since uh, since the the, the harvest. Uh, the wine fermenting alone, the malolactic through alone, 
and uh, sometimes we make a little bit of stirring. Uh, yes, all the natural. Fermentation is all natural. Uh, one yeast, and uh, I don't add any yeast. Uh, and uh, after, um, after yeast. Sorry. Que, que des levures indigènes. Que des levures indigènes, oui, oui. Je ne sais pas faire, mais de levures, c'est pas quelque chose que je ne sais pas faire. Uh, yes, all in barrels. Uh, we've got different size of barrels now. Uh, most of the barrels are 20, 228 liters, like this. Uh, we've got a little bit of 300 liters barrels. And uh, last year we stopped these new things, uh, which is a uh, poodle, 1,200 liters. And uh, going very well. Uh, we use between 20 and 30 percent of new French oak. All the barrels are in French oak, and 20 and 30 percent of new oak. It's the same for all of all, all the wine. So you see the cellar. Uh, the cellar is from 1850 round. Uh, my parents' place. And that's it. After 18 months of the, between 12 months uh, aging, uh, we wipe the wine uh, without pump. So we get uh, pressure control and we take off the wine without pump. Uh, we use sometimes casein and bentonite after tasting. Uh, it's not necessary all the time, but we test the wine and we see, we do some tests. Uh, gravity, uh, no, we, um, uh, we put a compressor with uh, air on the, on, the, on the barrel and uh, the wine goes through the bottom uh, naturally. So we don't have to use pump. It's working well because uh, it's very slow, but um, the wine is not damaged. Uh, we don't break anything and uh, it's very slow, very gentle. Uh, it's not gravity, but it's kind of gravity, if we want to. Uh, and um, after the, the, the finding or not, uh, we do a bottling. That's it. Uh, uh, now for the reds. Um, for the reds, the small quantity of the reds, uh, we Pick in a small uh, box like this to bring in a topping table. Uh, you see my father doing the topping table there. Uh, and all the wine, all the gra white, gra red, sorry, grapes goes to the topping table. And this stem or not, sometimes we don't this stem. It depends on uh, the ripeness of the, of the fruit, of what kind of wine I make and uh, if the, uh, this is my 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 choice. Actually. So most of the cuvee is around twenty uh, between ten and twenty percent uh, old bench. Uh, uh, is um, the most important is not the stem is actually the old bench uh, because you got a more um, aromatic wine, uh, different kind of aromatic. It's more complicated because uh, it can be dangerous uh, for the winemaker, but uh, give a um, different kind of flavor, uh, more fruity flavor, and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, a small quantity or a big quantity, uh, it depends. So after that, we put the, the, the grapes in the concrete tank, uh, the concrete tank where we do the fermentation. Uh, during the fermentation, we test almost every day, twice a day, to see what we have to do on the wine, uh, from cover, finish down. Uh, Pinot is very gentle, and we don't have enough, uh, so much tannins and, uh, and color. It's not, uh, it's not the Syrah or Cabernet, which is very, very intense, very color. Pinot, we have to extract uh, all we can without over extract. Because after that, we have more uh, green tannins and uh, something very strong. So we want to extract the maximum without uh, the 
the bad things from the tenant, from the seed as well. Uh, and that's it. Um, after um, around 18 days in the uh, in tanks, we press it and go to the to the cellar in Bawel. In same in the same condition than the white. Uh, so you see the press. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the same kind of bowel than for the white, uh, which is uh, 228 liters, 300 liters, and a little bit of uh, food now. And um, a bit more new work for the for the wet because we've got uh, tannins to, to support it and we give more uh, more oxygen. So sometimes it's a bit more than thirty percent, but uh, normally thirty percent new work. We do a, a racking uh, eighteen months after the 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 the, the, the sitting barrel, which means the, the wine stay eighteen months in barrel uh, around. And uh, after that, a little fining, very, very light for the red, and uh, but and that's it. That's for the for the wine making, and it's all the same for all the all the all the wines. Uh, you see the town of Marceau. Uh, I'm not biodynamic. Uh, I'm very interesting about it, but Moon is um, is very easy to uh, to organize the work with the Moon. Sometimes probably doesn't uh, the, the Moon doesn't have any effect, but it's very it's very simple to organize it. So even if it doesn't work, it's easy to to, to organize with the Moon. Thank you. Uh, and by dynamic, uh, it can be the next step. Uh, but for the moment, I'm, I want to be uh, organic and everything in a good condition. And after that, we can we can work on by dynamic. I want to make wine first, and probably in five or, or six years, we will start by dynamic. Uh, I can show you a map of the vineyard if you want. Then uh, when can I try to? Will you have a little bit of uh, Carton Bressan available for Quebec soon? Uh, it's in bottle now. So um, as soon as um, the virus is uh, over, we can have a, a Corton Bresson. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a big story, uh, Corton Bresson. Uh, it's probably the, the most, uh, uh, the, 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 the wine making, the, it was very impressive for me because it's a young vine. Uh, we replanted in, uh, in 2016. And last year we started uh, again to make uh, Corton Bresson. But it was too small to make a, a large concrete uh, tank, so we made a very small uh, quantity, only two barrels, which is uh, 300 bottles at, at the end. And uh, we do 100% all bunch, so without any any distem, and uh, we make it like a um, natural way, without any sulfur, without any uh, addition or something. Uh, I just add sulfur after the malolactic, which means uh, uh, in spring, after six months in barrel. That's it. And makes the wine very interesting, very fruity, very uh, elegant, uh, but something that I never did before. So I'm very proud of it because it works very well. I'm very proud of this wine, but it was very stressful during the, during the wine making. It's a new challenge for it. Philippe, uh, what did you want next? Do you want to, do you want to keep going through this presentation? Um, I've got a map. Uh, uh, you should have control of this, of the screen. Yeah, there you go. I can have a control of the, 
Okay. Uh, I, I have the control of the. Uh, okay. So yeah. we have the the map with the uh, the area. Ah, oh, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, in front of my uh, doing something like this, and uh, we can. So it's a um, drone, drone in English. Yeah. Um, we, we take a picture of the town. So this is a view clue here. You, you see it? Uh, this is uh, the, the town of Merceau. Merceau is uh, 1,500 people living here. Uh, and we can move. So you see, this is the Côte de Bonne here. So, uh, this is uh, our little hill. And that's the flat this part, which is, uh, we can call it the Saône Valley. Uh, it's very flat. So if we, if we go back to the, to the quality of the wine, on the flat, first we've got here a Bourgogne Appellation. Then when you start to middle of the hill here, uh, we've got Village and some of the Premier Cru. And the best exposition for all the vineyards is from Cru. So you see that Merceau, if we go uh, walking there, this town here is uh, Poma, which is um, five kilometers from Merceau. Uh, this is Volney here. And uh, all the mark is my vineyard. So uh, we put a map on my vineyard. So uh, for example, this is our red Merceau vineyard, uh, Bourgogne, red Burgundy vineyard. And if we go there, this is Ossédures here. So uh, you see Ossédures is a little town uh, right here. And uh, our premier cru, Les Dures, come from the vineyard here. So you see, this is a, um, if you back to there, uh, this is a red part of the Côte de Beaune. And at the end of, um, of Merceau, start the white part. So if we go turn, this is Merceau, Appellation. Uh, and if you go the other way, uh, we've got the town of, Puligny here and Chassagne the starter here. So all the marks make different wine. And the most impressive is if we go on the premier cru. So again, we've got the hill here, the town of Merceau. Um, so we've got three marks here, uh, which is our vineyard of Les Perrières, Les Genvrières, and Merceau Les Charmes. This is the best uh, area of the town uh, where we make the best wine in Merceau. So I've got a small parcel in Les Perrières. I'm very, very proud of it because we only have uh, 40 growers making Perrières. Uh, I've got a small parcel in Les Genvrières and a small parcel of Les Charmes. If you see, uh, all different blocks is a different grower. So we have uh, each each grower has got a little parcel everywhere, and here we make a Merceau Charme, which is very different than Merceau Perrier and very different than Merceau Genrier. It's very interesting because with this map you can understand uh, the, the, the 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 size of the appellation. Uh, the soil is very different here because you've got a lot of uh, stones. Um, the water goes very well. Uh, back very well. Uh, it's very dark soil, and we make the wine here very Merceau style, which is very massive, very grass, very buttery, uh, like um, an old style Merceau. Uh, uh, the, the, the buttery, the creamy, creamy flavor, the, the powerful. 
If we go in Genouillère, uh, Genouillère here we make wine very aromatic, very pleasant, very complex, uh, very long. Uh, it's got uh, this kind of flavor from the, from the trees, which is Genouillère. Come on, this is Genouillère. Maybe. C'est Juniper, Philippe. Juniper, ok. So, Genouillère a got um, this, this flavor of, of Juniper. Juniper. Uh, and if we go straight to the world, uh, we've got Perrière, which is uh, probably the most uh, important premier cru for, um, for one maker in Merceau. Uh, Perrier, we've got the white sole, uh, very sticky, completely different than John uh, It makes wine very uh, massive, very uh, very strong, with this kind of tannins, tannins for the white, which is very uh, uncommon. But we've got tannins on white uh, on Perrier, and uh, very long, very expressive, and um, um, a lot of particles. So again, in uh, 200 meters from each vineyard, we make different wine. Sur ces trois parcelles de de Merceau, tu fais combien de bouteilles? Alors, uh, we produce uh, Genouillère is our biggest parcel, is 0.4 hectares. We produce eight barrels, around eight barrels which means 2,400 bottles uh, on a good year. Charm is uh, 0 0.25 hectares. Uh, we produce around five barrels. So uh, for each barrel, we've got 300 bottles around, uh, which means for the, for the Charm, uh, 1,500 bottles. And for the Perrier, for the good year, is uh, three barrels, uh, which is, uh, a bit less than 1,000 bottles. <coughs> so each vineyard is kept separately, which is very uh, important. So uh, when we pick the grapes, we bring uh, the grape of the charm first, then we go to the Genouillère, and we make a special press, a special tank, and special cuvette. And at least we make special wine, different wine. And it's in the, um, again, in the vineyard, in the winemaking, is all the same way. We um, we do the same work from the from the small appellation to the top wine. It's all exactly the same the same work. The most important is the uh, express the terroir. Is uh, is the is look after the vineyard. Each vineyard is very carefully uh, works and we express the terroir, which is important. And at the end, uh, the, the each vineyard uh, that holds all the uh, character of uh, its own site. You can do a little trip. So we've got vineyard in Chassagne, red Chassagne, and uh, white Chassagne. And this is our little vineyard of Puligny from Ixuil et Changa. So you see everything is very close. And if we move there, this is our parcel of Bourgogne Coder, right? From uh, Merger du Mauvin. And we've got the Grand Charles here. So have you got any questions? Do, um, Philippe, tu vois, tu vois la question? Non, je n'ai pas vu. Uh, Sherry qui demande, uh, est -ce, were these vineyards acquired after 1995? Est-ce que les, ces vignobles, ils ont été acquis après uh, 1995? Uh, non, 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 non. Ces vignobles ont été dans une famille avant 1995. Ils sont partie de... Certains vignobles ont été... 
uh, bought by my father in the 70s, in the 80s. Uh, and most of it come from the family. Uh, so I come from my grandfather and my grand-grandfather. Et en superficie totale, tout le vignoble, Philippe Bouzereau, donne combien? Uh, on a une quinzaine d'hectares. We've got 15 hectares of vineyard, around 15 and 18 hectares of vineyard, uh, which means um, I keep only uh, 100,000 bottles a year around. Because some of the parts goes to the big negotiants, because if the quality is not enough, for example, for the young vineyard or uh, some parcel I don't like, uh, I sell in juice after the press, go to the, to the negotiations like uh, Bouchard or Jadot. I really want to keep only the good quality. Up. Brandon demande si tu as un, un vignoble préféré. <laughs> Ça dépend du millésime. <laughs> it's, a, it's a only, always a question. Uh, good question. Is like the wine. Is like a, ask a mother which kid is the best. I've got um, some sometimes in terms of uh, uh, geography of, of the terroir. Uh, I really enjoy the, the Narvo because we've got a very good view of the landscape of the town and you can see the sunset uh, on the on the spring and uh, and summer. Uh, I've got a special effect with a uh, view club because uh, it's our baby. Uh, and I've got a very special relation with the Grand Charon, uh, which is vineyard here, because uh, I used to say it uh, is a part of the family. Uh, Grand Charon is in the family since uh, many, many generations. And uh, the, the first memories uh, of the works and vineyard I've got is in Les Grand Charon when I was uh, five years old or four years, four years old. I don't remember exactly. It's a part of the really. Uh, it's like my 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 little brother. Look at this kind of relation with Le Grand Champ. Is um the vineyard is very uh, for us is uh, again is like a, a part of the family because I, I used to. To be with my father in a, in a vineyard on summer and on the, on the, during the holidays, and uh, I've got memories uh, of spending a lot of time in the, in the vineyard and follow my father and and, and, uh, and my kids uh, in the same way. They go, they come with me in, uh, in the vineyard to to make bicycles, to, to walk, to see the grapes, to taste the grapes, to eat the grapes. Is a, is a part of, the, of our life, which is very important. Tu as vu cette question ou? Euh... Non, je ne vois, euh, vois plus les questions. Ok, ok. Um, uh, Sherry demande uh, combien de bouteilles au total uh, sous l'étiquette Philippe Bouzereau annuellement? Uh, 100,000 bottles a year around. 100,000? Yeah. Okay. We probably start to be in a bit more from the next few years. Uh, because until, until my father, my brother came back, uh, I think uh, 100,000 bottles a year is enough for, uh, for, for me. Uh, because uh, after that I have to be more on the commercial things and things and everything. So I want to be uh, focused on my vineyard and I, want, I don't want to be a business, I didn't want to be a businessman. So 100,000 bottles is enough to be able to sell it correctly and to, to keep an eye on the, on the vineyard and the, and the winemaking. But now with my brother we can, we can think differently. And we probably increase until uh, uh, 120 or 150. Et il uh, y a, y a deux questions. De, une de Darcy qui dit uh, um, combien de, de ces 100 000 bouteilles sont en blanc? Et, ah. uh, et l'autre, uh, c'est um, combien tu pourrais produire si tu ne vendais pas au négoce? Il y a, y a des, certains jus que tu ne vendais pas au négoce. Uh, so, 
uh, is run for, for this kind of, is, is 80% of the production is white, which means for the moment 80,000 bottles uh, is white and 20,000 is red. And uh, if we keep everything, uh, <coughs> we probably increase until uh, 150, 160, or probably 70 on a good year. But I'm, I'm not sure it's, um, it's a good idea to keep everything because some of the parcel, I want to, to keep only the good parcel. So, for example, for the Grand Charon, uh, the size of the parcel, we've got two parcels here. So one hectare here, one hectare here, and another uh, half of the hectare here. Uh, some of the parcel have been replanted uh, uh, not so far. Uh, so I think the quality is not enough to be on the Philippe Bouzon label. So I prefer to sell it to the negotiants. And they can make a good wine, but for me, it's not enough quality for put on wine. So probably when the vineyard getting older, we can keep it. Uh, but for the moment, it's too, they are too young to, to make very good wine. Tu peux élaborer un peu rapidement sur la qu'est-ce que tu verrais comme différence. Euh disons, euh, qualitative et organoleptique entre le 17 et le 18? Ah, um, if we speak about the, the vintage, um, we had uh, two very different vintage, uh, 17 and 18. 17 was traditional burgundy vintage, uh, quite cool climate compared to the last uh, few years. Uh, so we made something very aromatic, very pleasant. Uh, very elegant, a lot of um, fruit flavor, very easy to drink, very easy to understand. You will take pleasure of, uh, of the wine. Uh, it's very um, aérien. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, very, very pleasant, very fruity and very. Um, oh, sorry. Very comment, clear. Tu dire, comment tu le dirais en français? Aérien. Aerial? <laughs> yeah. Not not light, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, pleasant. And um, 17 has got this um, little salty flavor on the back. Uh, um, make the bottle too small. I mean, if, if we are, if you are two, two people with one bottle, it's not enough. And uh, if we speak about the 18, uh, 18 is, um, it was very hot during the vintage. Uh, we spent a, a year very hot. So we make the wine very concentrate, very, uh, uh, very powerful. We've got a lot of density of the wine. The wine, uh, the reds are very dark. Uh, it's very good vintage for keep. In the, in the cellar, and uh, we keep a lot of uh, natural acidity and uh, uh, tannins for the, for the stem as well. Uh, I work on that. I work on the leaves. Um, uh, I work more on the leaves uh, on the 18th to give more density, more powerful. Philippe, tu peux, uh, tu peux expliquer le, le changement de Chardonnay Bourgogne à Bourgogne Côte d'Or? Ah, uh, Côte d'Or is a new appellation. Um, uh, we made it and we are very happy about it because until last year, uh, Bourgogne Chardonnay is very large appellation because you can make on all the Burgundy area, which mm. means from the Beaujolais to the Chablis, uh, which means actually from Paris to Lyon. Uh, that we want to do with Bourgogne Côte d'Or is to show that Uh, in Côte de Beaune and Côte de Nuit, we make different kind of wine than in Chablis or in Beaujolais. Uh, we want to, to, to show that uh, our Bourgogne is special. If we speak about the Bourgogne from, from Meursault, it's not the same than Bourgogne from Chablis. So we made a new appellation, uh, Bourgogne Côte d'Or. Uh, It means that uh, the Bourgogne, uh, Bourgogne uh, wines come from only Côte de Beaune and Côte de Nuit. So, uh, in terms of the, the wine from my domain, 
uh, is still the same making, is still the same uh, vineyard, but only the name uh, changed. And uh, what we want to say is, uh, okay, this is not just Bourgogne, it's Bourgogne from Marceau, uh, special, special vineyard from Côte d'Or. Um, Brendan asked earlier, uh, where do you export to? Um, we are very happy to export to Canada. Um, to export the, the, the wine, you mean? So where other than Canada do you sell ah, your wine? Okay. Um, um, uh, it's moving a lot at this moment because we used to sell uh, many of the wine, uh, the wine in, uh, in UK and uh, in US, uh, and we had a little problem with the Brexit and the um, and the Trump tax for the moment. Uh, the other market is uh, Japan. Uh, we sell a lot in, in Europe, uh, Belgium, Switzerland, Italy, uh, a bit of Germany, uh, Suède, Denmark. Uh, we've got a little client in, in Brazil as well. Uh, a bit everywhere in the world. Singapore. And um, most of the market, eight, uh, forty percent of the market is in France, in local local market, with private people, a lot of private people, because we used to sell um, a bottle since uh, since my father started in '58. He started uh, a local local clients, local customers, and they carry to to, to buy wine. We've got a few restaurants in Paris, in Lyon, as well. Most important is um, I'm not uh, again I'm not a, a big businessman. So in terms of selling, uh, I, I want people who understand what I'm doing in the, in the vineyard, and uh, people understand that uh, uh, it's part of the again it's a part of the family. A bottle of wine is a uh, you know my father planted the vineyard. Uh, some of the land come from my grandfather. We spend a lot of time working in the vineyard because uh, it's very hard to work. Uh, and a lot of time working in the cellar as well. So my target is, uh, is to find a good custom, customer that I've got a good relation with them. Uh, they understand the wine, they understand what I'm doing, uh, and not just to make a business. <laughs>